And finally, we find ourselves talking about diabetes type one. A whole other series of videos on diabetes type 2 so if that's what you're looking for um, you can just go ahead and find those for now we're going to get into the etiology behind diabetes type 1. let's talk about what causes diabetes type 1. so this is not very well defined people have uh, some kind of genetic predisposition towards diabetes type 1. And then usually what happens is there's some kind of triggering event. More often than not, it's uh, some kind of infection that results in the production of antibodies, and those antibodies eventually turn on your beta cells. But that won't happen unless you have uh, some kind of genetic predisposition towards diabetes type 1. So you have this triggering event. Uh, I think there are other, you know, there are other things that can trigger it, but most, more often than not, it's it's the um, infection. Sometimes it can be something like MI. Sometimes uh, increased stress, where you have a lot of cortisol, a lot of epinephrine, a lot of glucocorticoids being released into your system. Uh, all of that can can trigger kind of this this predisposition that's already sitting there. So it leads to a decline of insulin. The symptoms will usually won't appear until about 80 to 90% of those beta cells are destroyed. So onset usually happens in childhood. And um, sometimes type 1 can develop in adults in their late 30s, early 40s. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Oh, this was another thing. So you've got here a virus bacteria, this was supposed to mean stress, and then um, actually toxins, like any kind of poison it could also trigger that genetic, um, this kind of destruction of beta cells. And what happens is the body creates antibodies against that virus, but it's also creating antibodies against, well, specifically against islet cells. Those are called islet cell antibodies or ICAs. Basically, these, these they're destroyed over time. Um, this is the cause of that reduction, 80 to 9% of beta cell function, right? Because those antibodies are actually attacking the islet cells. They also attack this glutamate um, acid deoxycarbolase or whatever. It's just GAD65. This is found in 80% of people with diabetes on presentation, diabetes 1. This is what they're saying is when they do blood work, they find antibodies to this uh, GAD65. They find antibodies in the blood. Same thing with ICAs. They find those in the blood. Another place it attacks is, is insulin autoantibodies or IAAs. You don't need to know a ton about this. It's actually really complicated, but I think this is really neat that they can do tests now where if they detect ICAs, and IAAs, so antibodies that are working against islet cells and against insulin, plus you have a decrease in insulin, they can predict that you will develop type 1 diabetes within about five years. So in terms of this, I think understanding that diabetes type 1 is caused by this kind of destruction of these beta cells and that it's an autoimmune response is really, really, really important. It's, it's something has triggered an autoimmune response and, and it's destroying those, uh, those beta cells. That's really for a test. I mean, it's really good to be able to recognize these GAD65, ICA, and IAAs as like signals that something is going on, that, that there's antibodies in the blood. But other than that, I wouldn't go through memorizing what each one of them does.